everyone, it's Leanne. Welcome to another video on my YouTube channel. Today I'm reviewing Winsor & Newton Drawing Ink. I purchased this recently for card making and art as sort of an upgrade to the tools that I was using to create gold ink effects. So I'm going to do a review, some swatches, and talk about the benefits of this ink and compare it with some other options that Winsor & Newton offer. So let's get started. As I mentioned, Winsor & Newton offer two types of ink. They offer the drawing ink, which is what I've purchased, and they also offer a calligraphy ink. The difference between the two is that the drawing ink is water resistant and the calligraphy inks are not waterproof. The calligraphy inks do have a permanence rating though of two A's or A, double A to A, and with the drawing inks, they are fast drying and transparent. They come in 26 colors. The calligraphy inks come in 18 colors. With the calligraphy inks, they come with two colors of caps, either blue or red. That's how you can tell the difference. These ones have a black cap. The blue caps are thinner and more transparent on the calligraphy ink side, and they're best used for dip pens, fountain pens, tech pens, or airbrushing. With the red caps on the calligraphy ink side, they're more opaque, um, and they're better used with a dip pen or a brush pen, or a brush. Now, with the drawing inks, as I mentioned, there's 26 colors. You can mix those colors together to create new colors, which is fantastic. And you can also overlay those different colors together to create multiple effects, which is pretty neat. Um, these are best used with brushes, dip pens, or using airbrush. Now, these also can be thinned with water to make them uh, work better if you were to put them in a water brush, for example. On the bottle, there's a few um, notes as well. This says that the inks should be stirred well before use, and I'll show you that in, later in the video here. It can be thinned with water, as I mentioned, and is suitable best for a brush or steel nibbed pen. Now, when you open up the case, it has another warning that says, wash pens and brushes immediately after use and keep this from getting frozen. Now, this ink, as I mentioned, when it's dry, it's permanent, so it will destroy your brushes if you don't clean them out right away as well as your pens. So you want to make sure that you have water handy when you're using this ink. But otherwise, it's beautiful, and I was quite impressed with this purchase. Now, when I pull this out, you can see as I move this bottle around, you can see that there's a separation happening where the ink stays up in this corner and you can see that all the liquid is falling down as I move it. And so that's the point that they make about having to stir this up. The gold pigment itself is really thick and it separates from the mixture, the liquid mixture inside the bottle. So you really want to make sure that this is mixed up really well before you use it so that you get an equal distribution of the pigment and the liquid application that makes it work. So as I move this around you can see that it's it's quite separated. So what I like to do is shake it first. I usually shake it first a little bit. It doesn't seem to mix well that way though. I find that I actually have to open it up and stir it. So I'm going to open this and stir it up with the end of a brush. So here's a look at the inside. If you can see inside on the rim, see if I can get a close-up of just the ink moving around. It's so beautiful. It travels along the liquid and it's just absolutely gorgeous. This ink is some of the prettiest ink I've ever seen. So I have some brushes I picked up at the dollar store. I didn't want to use any good brushes with this ink because I didn't want to wreck any of my good brushes. So I'm just going to pull one of those out and work up the nib here. It's got some um, just some solution on it to keep the bristles together. What I usually do is take the end of the brush and use it to mix the ink. So when I go like this I can feel that there's some gumming up in the corners at the bottom of the bottle. So I just want to make sure that I'm getting all of that stirred up well. When I pull this out, you'll notice that it beads down together and then falls off the end of the brush, which is kind of unique. I didn't expect this when I first tried it, but it helps get the brush pretty clean and I'm not wasting too much ink by trying to stir it. I'm easily able to scrape it off back into the bottle at the end too. Now for a test, I have a piece of just standard cardstock. This is a Staples brand cardstock. I have a Micron pen in 08. I'm going to draw a line to show transparency and do some swatches over this.
If you look inside the bottle here, you can see that the ink is already starting to separate. It happens really quickly, so you want to make sure that you're stirring it just before you're using the ink. I always make sure when I put my brush in to stir it well also, just to make sure that I'm getting um, a good mix of both parts of the pigment. Now I'll draw a little bit here on this line so you can see how transparent it is. Which, doing that, I can't see that black line hardly at all. I'll do a few more strokes, and then I'm going to try taking some ink off my brush and see if I can just sort of get that transparency. So there it is, where I've got less pigment and more of the liquid on my brush. And you can start to see the black line showing through. Now, as it mentions, this is a transparent ink, but I find that it actually holds up pretty solid. And so... I like this mostly for a replacement for doing gold um, decorations on my cards and my art. Normally, in the past, I've used a gold jelly roll pen, which is great. I really like these, but you can only get one, um, one thickness of line with them. And if you're trying to do a big area, or you're trying to do, or even a small area too, if you're doing detail, or you're trying to do thicks and thins, it's hard to, to achieve that with this. Um, on its own. I've also used a gold sharpie which is also really nice. The thing with the gold sharpie is it creates a darker base of gold so I find that it is a little dull sometimes. I'll do a swatch of those so you can see the difference. So this is the gold sharpie and it's beautiful but it's a little dark for gold. And then my gold jelly roll pen works really nicely as well but you have to do quite a few strokes to get a thick enough line or something that's got enough weight, it is quite transparent. So you can see the differences there. You can also see the luminescence of this gold ink of the Windsor & Newton. It is just incredibly gorgeous. It has so much vibrancy and the metallic pigment inside just picks up the light incredibly. To the point where you almost can't see the color if you're getting a direct reflection of it. So it was really great to add detail to your artwork and your cards, to add a little bit of embellishment, and it adds a different visual layer of texture, which is really nice because it gives variety and interest to cards and art. I'm going to try doing a sample as well for you on the black paper that I have here. I thought that this would be really beautiful to try because it is more opaque than I expected and as advertised. I'm going to make sure I stir this up again because it settles so easily. I'm just going to wipe off some of the gold, saving as much as I can. And again, it runs down the brush pretty nicely, so it drips a lot of it drips back into the container. And that is beautiful. It's not 100% opaque. Of course, you can see some of that black showing through, but it is a pretty good application considering that it is the type of ink it is. I think something else you could do is write down some gold Sharpie as a base and then color over it. Or paint over it, I guess. And I think what this could do is just create sort of a background um, to hold that ink and it helps bring it up a little bit in brightness whereas you can see some of the black coming through on this side um, just laying down that sharpie as a base gives it just a little bit of support visually to stand out a little bit more on a darker colored background. I just want to give you one more look. I'll try to do a close-up of the ink moving around in the or the pigment moving around in the ink. It is just gorgeous. It's one of the most beautiful things I've seen. So hopefully you can see how the pigment is swirling around in the ink flow or the liquid that it's holding, that's holding it. And it just seems to dance around the edge as it moves around. It is so, so, so pretty. So this is my first time trying the Windsor & Newton drawing ink. I'm more than impressed with this. I got the smaller sample, but I think next time I will buy the larger bottle. I've already used this in some of my art and I've been super impressed with the effects that I get. 
Here's a look at an art piece I did recently using this ink. This is my first time using this drawing ink and I used it as a splatter effect on this galaxy painting I did. And it is just incredible. I was really impressed with the opacity and I also liked the thinness of this that I could make these splatters. I did not water this down at all to create this splatter effect. So I'm really happy with how this turned out and it was able to keep the opacity because I didn't water it down and that's what I wanted. And it went across really nicely. It didn't um, do any hard dots. It really gave really fine splatters as needed. It was just beautiful to work with. So I'm really, really happy with this ink and I did buy the smaller size, the 14 mil, but next time I will be buying the 30 milliliter bottle and I hope to get some more colors because it is just incredible to work with. I hope this gave you sort of an insight into another option for your card making and your art and hopefully you'll try it out or if you have tried the ink or you have some creative uses for it, let me know in the comments below. I'd be interested to hear how you use this ink and what you think of it. If you did enjoy this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe so you're notified as I post more art and card making videos. Thank you so much for watching.